flying stage. Oh. We didn't What's even this go level to called? We don't know what the icy, level's called. Icy flight. I'm so we confused. Just, we that just I don't know sporadically what's going appeared on. here. There's no transition, Ryan. No transition. Think of the children, my man. You need to show I the don't... load screen, otherwise you're misrepresenting <laughs> the game. How do I know this... you didn't load up Game Genie in between now and then? I don't know what to believe anymore. The, the loading screen is itself a lot because I'm playing this on a PS3, so. Uh, yeah. no. yeah, you better miss that lighthouse. Serves you right. <laughs> the level knew how you would edit. So wait, is that the train? Is that the train that delivers all of those Donkey Kong uh, barrels to the wherever Donkey Kong needs to be platforming at the moment? Sure. Apparently now the Arctic because um, tropical freezing. Yeah. I don't see. TK oh, this will be. This will probably be up a couple of uh, days after that game comes out. Topical. Um, topical. Yeah. Still don't give a shit though. So. Yeah, I. I'm not, I don't plan on getting that for a very long time. So. You haven't even played Returns yet, right? I've only sampled Returns. That was the 3DS. Yeah. Console version is better. Well, no, the console version has the shake to roll thing. 3DS version uses a button, making it automatically better. <laughs> I haven't even played that, and I know that. Oh, I know why we had to cut to this, because you fucked up three times. Yup. <laughs> <laughs> it all makes sense. All is forgiven, and now the healing can begin. Level's called Icy Flight. There you go. Save. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Man. Well, you wanted the level transition. There the, you the, go. New jump cut, the, the new jump cut mandate something must die. Don't. You, ha you have to sacrifice something to jump cut. Wait, when did when did that rule get taken into place? Do we have no. to, like. Just uh, now. So, uh, what? Do we have to sacrifice a, a virgin to the junk, jump cut gods in order to access their powers or something? Well, we didn't want to pay $900 for Sony Vegas, so we made a deal with the devil instead. Aw, oh, damn it. <laughs> It, that didn't work yeah, for Spider-Man. Why do you think that worked for us? That was Spider-Man's fault. Well, at least it happened early enough in the level that it really didn't hinder my progress too much. Yep. What about that big thing you haven't killed yet? You can't kill these things until you get the supercharger super flame. Oh. And considering the level design, I'm assuming Super Flame? Yeah. Or there's both in this stage. Um, I know there's one level where there's both. Do these fairies ever come back again, or are they just sort of... Well, they're, uh, they're, they're in that area for the entire level. No, I mean, I'm talking about the series as a whole, are they? No. Uh, no, they're just in this game? Yeah. Huh. I think the Super Flame is Spyro's equivalent to an erection. What, ha what happens in the next game, few games is that basically you have power-up arches. Once you kill enough enemies, the arch activates and you get to use the power-up. And if when the power-up just goes away, you just go to the arch again and you get it again. And so the fairies just They just, stop. Get, they just get replaced, yeah. Oh. So you kill enemies to unlock the arch. Yeah. And then you can just keep going through the arch as many times as you want. Yeah. So you're sacrificing enemies to the devil. We Guys, sounds like it. stop sacrificing stuff to the devil. The dude's a giant prick. He's all like, I don't know. Yeah. He, does, he does punish the bad people. Yeah, and he has a massive backlog. We should cut him some slack. Uh, that actually happened in a Deadpool comic once. Uh, for for reasons that are complicated to explain, uh, Deadpool kills a guy and sends him to hell in uh, order to get him to talk to Mephisto. And then the guy's just waiting in line in hell and he's just like, Are you sure that we're in hell? Yeah, we're in hell. Uh, can I get a move on? Why, why do you want to cut the line? This is the best part of hell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this game starts to get narrow. <laughs> Kasoko. 
Now they're, just, now they're just banging their heads against the keyboard. Old dragons know there's magic in the <laughs> space. See what it can do to your power of flame. Wait, what did he just say? He was talking about the super flame. Oh. Didn't we start using that, like, yeah. for, like, uh, yep. yeah. all right. Uh, I brought that up earlier in, like, some of the things that the dragons say. Well, you go to world six, press X to jump. <laughs> no shit. Well, she thinks I didn't already do that, like, 5,000 times. <laughs> well, there is no guarantee you necessarily played the first level with the super flame in it, right? No. Not necessarily, no. no. You can only ignore so many dragons, though. Mm hmm Hold on, I want to look up how well Spyro 1 did. Um, well, obviously it did well enough to get two sequels. <laughs> True. <laughs> 3D two platformers were pretty big at the time. Well, they were the new sort of thing. Like, I don't know if they were the most popular, um, like, genre, because I think at least on the PlayStation 1, I think RPGs probably uh, were the most popular thing, because Final Fantasy 7. Spyro the Dragon. Let's see what question what, what VG charts questionably accurate uh, charts say. Uh, Spyro the Dragon sold five million copies worldwide. Most of those were in uh, North America. What a surprise! <laughs> no, but it's like North America was like over th uh, three million. In Japan, it's like seventy thousand. Well, so, that um, that's a little bit. I don't want to say xenophobia, but Japan has a big track record of not buying American-made games. Yeah. Is it the same thing with Crash or console, Or consoles, for that matter. Like, I remember the, like, the Xbox or the 360 does horribly in Japan. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, like, I'm looking... Hold on, I'm looking... Well, that's not necessarily true, because Crash almost uh, sold a million uh, copies. Uh, Crash 1 sold almost a million copies in Japan, and uh, Crash 2 and 3 both broke a million in Japan, so... I guess they really just Crash didn't... was better received in Japan than Spyro, yeah. I believe. I guess they just don't like Spyro? I don't know. It's more that I think Crash 1, the Crash series was a bit of an outlier compared to what normally happens. Yeah, I guess so. Because normally what you get is American developers tend to make stuff more for Western audiences because Japan has a million game companies that already make stuff for them. So when it does get released in Japan, they're like, oh, it's just some Western thing. <laughs> Okay, so apparently uh, Spyro Year of the Dragon's the third one, right? Yeah. Okay, apparently Spyro 1's the best-selling Spyro game, though. Uh, apparently. Yeah. Well, it happens. Yeah. Okay. Or at least that's what VG Charts says. I have no idea how actually accurate the, those guys are. I remember so. most people owning Spyro 2. Hmm. I don't think I was surrounded by anybody that owned a Spyro game. Probably another reason why I was so reluctant to get into it in the first place. Nobody could tell me via word of mouth of whether or not the game was good or you not. You could just ask me. <laughs> not back then, but... Yeah, <laughs> I was gonna say 13 years ago. Hold your horns, well, you could have asked me. <laughs> so, uh, John t uh, drives uh, for, like, what, 20 hours down to Atlanta? Knocks on some random you guy's door? I don't know why I'm visiting you, or what my attention is being here. But Destiny has told me to ask you, why are you crying? <laughs> Handy. You didn't, you didn't answer his question, Ryan. I'm not crying. <laughs> oh. Well, that was anticlimactic. Hmm. You know, the Super Flame looks like it would be a lot more fun to use if it didn't last for only like 10 seconds. It gets a lot more use in the next two games. It was around the beginning of the PlayStation 2 era where my, um, my taste for platformers started to dwindle. Because like, well, the only one I can well, immediately during recall the back PS2 in the GameCube Xbox era, there started to be a lot less of them. The only the only platformer I can immediately recall ever putting any that amount of effort or time into was Super Mario Sunshine. You know, like I didn't get it back into platformers, but probably into like Mario Galaxy. So for like f that five years in between the well, games, again, that well, uh, I assume you're I assume you're I assume you're uh, excluding Sonic um, there. Um, like, well, Sonic doesn't play anything like any Sonic. Of these games. Is, well, no, even then, though, because like, 
I guess if you just want to count like just playing games in general, then I guess you could say. But like even new games, like when, when like when Sonic Heroes came out in two thousand and four, three. three. Yeah. Like I, I I played it fully once, and then I put it down for like eight years. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know and, yeah I, I think it just has more to do with the the games not being really made um as much as anymore and also around that point uh that's like 2004 is when the ds came out and really like all the uh 2d uh platformers even some 3d platforms platformers became more of a handheld thing around that point for some reason you know um so I don't know. I guess they. Um, I guess it was just. It's sort of an interesting uh, time in uh, like N sixty four PS one is sort of an interesting time in game design where it's just like the they, first they like try everything. <laughs> yeah, try everything, and for some reason this became super popular, and then almost as quickly as it became popular, it just stopped being popular. So did you guys like go through like phases? Like, um, as kids, like, where did you, like, try... Did you stick to one specific genre only because you knew you liked it, or is that one point or another, you're like, you know, let me try something else now? Well, I didn't really get an, an awful lot of chances to buy my own games. Uh, it was basically just whatever I got for Christmas or my birthday, that was usually what I played for the next uh, couple of months. So, you know, it yeah. was more just a matter of me playing... Like, the only game that I can remember buying with my own money um, back when I was a kid was... Mario Superstar Baseball for the GameCube, um, actually. So really, it was just a matter of playing what I owned until I got sick of it, and then, you know, uh, uh, then hoping that the next uh, that you know next time my birthday came around, you know, I would get a good something game decent. Then. Something decent then, yeah. And then I would get Chronicles of Narnia for the GameCube. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. That's a tragic ending to a tragic tale. I think that, no, but I think that that same year I also got Tetris DS, so, um, you know, um, there's a good, uh, there's a good side to that story, too, so. Whoops. Like a bitch. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> well, you did get clocked in the head twice, so... <laughs> Gotta save now. No, I'm getting health. Ah. Uh. <laughs> by falling off a cliff. No, by jumping down here. Oh, the mush. Oh, those are the mushrooms. I thought that the game's car alarm was going off. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, I seem to a devil part my Lexus. <laughs> Why do you have no, a Lexus? Lexus? You're a dragon. <laughs> Oh, they got so bored of you gotta, trying gotta, to get gotta, health that they fell asleep. Got to do something with all of my with all of my treasure. Oh, for the love of uh, open sesame. Uh, is I mean, that's all I know. That's the, all I know. <laughs> is the password shave and a haircut? <laughs> Two bits. So now you got to go find a. No, now I need to leave the area and come back so those things won't go away. So you gotta find some way to bribe them. More like the spell grows, goes up the stairs to activate them, so you gotta be fast. Wait, what spell? Uh, the spell it, that it takes turns the while. armor on. Yeah. Oh, okay, so you just gotta be go fast. back and uh, go yeah. before make it they up, all wake up. Make it up yeah. before yeah. that last sparkles. one turns on. Alright game doesn't quite tell you that, so... Oh, this is a 500 gem level. Yep. Oh, and now you can kill all those guys. Yep. No, wait, there were still two chests left! Well, I, I might as well kill as many as I can <laughs> with a super flame. You should have got those chests! Now, burn. He's going to have to go back to that room anyway. Well, he wouldn't need to go back to that room anyway if he just... <sighs> Never mind, he doesn't do need to go back to that room. He do got you want to play the game, swoop. Ted? Not particularly. We can still critique it, goddammit. They're pretty short on the PlayStation. They're pretty cheap on the PlayStation Network, which you have now. Which you have yeah, now. Yeah, but I'm, I'm yeah, saving... Yeah, you hear that? You hear that, Ted? You own the PlayStation Network. Yes, I do own the PlayStation <laughs> Network. <laughs> oh, that's I... why Bioshock Infinite's free now. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Actually, for on serious note, I'm saving the $10 that I, that I uh, miraculously had in there for some reason. 
for whenever I have an open spot so that I can buy Final Fantasy IX. So, yeah. Just, well, I'd rather you play that. We might as well just buy it now because it stays on your account forever. Yeah, but I, I'm gonna. I, if I don't, here's the thing: if I buy it now, then I'm never going to play it. If I <laughs> buy it now, if I buy it with the intention of playing it right away, I'll actually start at least play a couple of hours of it. You know? Right. I get what you're saying. Because hmm. otherwise, it just ends up being another one of those games that looks good guys, on the shelf. Guys, did you see the number on the screen? It was over nine thousand. Uh, shut up. Can, it's like, can something collect virtual dust? <laughs> yes.